lately we've been talking about um, the subject started a couple weeks ago where I mentioned that um, uh, there, there's a case where this fellow, um, he changed his sex. He didn't change categories in uh, kickboxing. He changed sex. And so now after 30, 35 years uh, of being a male, he turned himself into a woman and now he's fighting women and he's beating them, making money becoming famous and the women are a little upset saying, look, this guy is really a guy and he looks like a guy. I mean, he's got the body of a, of a man, but supposedly he's a woman because uh, he made a sex change operation. And so the question is, uh, should that be allowed? And then the counter argument is, why not? I mean, you know, we have women, they want equality uh, in many fields and uh, they probably deserve, you know, in every field to be equal to, you know, to men. The question is, why not in sports? Why not uh, make all sports unisex? Even the tough ones like, you know, boxing and uh, wrestling and so on, weightlifting, bodybuilding, all these um, rough uh, activities, we can call them, right? Why not? Why not have everybody compete against everybody? In fact, women will come up the ranks much faster, become better because they have to compete against men there's going to be a learning curve. And the question is, if that learning cur curve leads to equality, where someday you get a boxing champion, which is a woman instead of a man, beats the heavyweight champion of the world, uh, male, <laughs> and we have a female world champion. Why not? Isn't, isn't that possible? And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of opinions out there, especially men. Uh, but the, the question is, you know, women have come up the ranks. There are women who fight out there and they are professionals. Uh, these guys look at them and say, oh, she, he's just a girl. She's just a girl. Uh, no, you're not, you're not looking at a girl. You're looking at a gladiator. She can beat the tar out of you, you know? So why not? Why not have unisex sports? That way we have total equality everywhere in uh, salaries and rights, sports, right? And so some people answered or made questions around that uh, subject. Here's one fellow. And he says, in most relationships, women have more power than men, okay? A uh, typical woman controls the relationships thanks to three major levers of powers. Uh, positions uh, herself as the most valuable party, sets a frame where the man's job is to cater to her needs, assess the man's value and worthiness based on how well he provides for her. Most women do it subconsciously, and most men accept her frames without even realizing they are being controlled. Uh -huh. Uh, says women treat men like children. Women get quiet. Women are flatter men. Women compare men to other men. The majority of women aren't interested in physical competition with men. Yeah, they're not uh, interested. Of course not. And likewise, most men are not even in competition uh, in sports. You know, uh, it's for people who who want to make money, who might want to make a career out of it that I'm talking about. Obviously, it's a small percentage of humanity. And I'm saying if if those women want to make money. Well, what's wrong with having them compete against men? And if we do it today, you know, more men will beat more women. You know, the men will be in the upper half of those rankings. But the issue is uh, how much time will it take for women to females to catch up and be on the par with men? Isn't that possible? And so that's the question, you know, you should ponder. Okay? I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying that they might. And it's just a question of how much time. We have. If we have very little time, as I think we have on the clock, that extinction's around the corner, I don't think it'll ever happen. But if we had another 100 years, 200 years, everybody competing against everybody, why not? And as far as, you know, being dominated and so on, you know, you got all kinds of relations out there. You know, you got men who dominate women, women who dominate men. You, you've got uh, uh, women who treat men like kids and vice versa, you know. So I think you've got everything out there. It's just a question of... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what percentages are on either side, but to say that women control men, yeah, to some degree, and men control women as well. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can reach any conclusion on that. I'm not even sure there's a study that shows something like that. Okay, okay another fellow uh, along the same lines, same issue. Does chromosomes alone not only denominators for sex? Uh, he's saying that, you know, we should not judge um, whether a person's male or female just on the chromosomes, like women, you know, double X and you have males XY. Uh, he gives an example here. There is a uh, in, intersex, birth defect um, born individuals that are more common nowadays. They have Kleinfelter syndrome, also called XXY syndrome. I guess they are born with all of these 
chromosomes, these weird chromosomes. There are also other types of chromosome disorders. De the definition for sex has to be more rigorous than just the chromosomes. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure you can find a, a perfect definition, not for sex. Uh, all I'm saying is we have a practical definition, something that is more or less objective, and that applies to over 99% of humanity. Now, as time goes by, we have some weird cases, uh, probably because we've had a lot of inbreeding for thousands of years. You know, we bred only with our species. And after a while, you know, you whittle all that uh, diversity away. Over time, you know, you, you, you know there's a, a more uniformity in our uh, genes, in our gene pool. And here you have an animal, it's the uh, Komodo dragon, and he does, a, a she really, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the she's, uh, has a WZ chromosome, and she is able to have children all by herself without the aid of a male, okay? And uh, other lizards and other animals have that ability as well. And so, yeah, I mean, we can have a, a male in our uh, species that is born with, I don't know, WZ, <laughs> you know, instead of XXY, XY, uh, he's born with WZ and or it, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, there is a small percentage, but not because of that. I think we can um, say, well, then we can't define sex. I think uh, for the for a practical purposes in this case, uh, all we're trying to figure out, you know, again, is if male and female can compete against each other. And I think for that, uh, using the XXXY is, is just fine. And if the guy come, is, is a fellow who changes sex and goes fight with a woman, well, uh, there's two issues there. One, should he be, be allowed to fight these women? Is is this fellow a he or a she just because he changes sex, especially at the age of 30, 35, like in this case? And the other one is, why not? Why can't he fight? Should we all fight against each other uh, if you're going to talk about professionalism, right? And yeah, most uh, people don't go and fight. Most people don't become gladiators, okay? So it's just for those people who want to make money, want to make a career out of it. Should they be allowed to fight anyone against anyone, everyone against every, everyone, you know? Uh, you know, in uh, video games, I don't play these video games, but I see my kids <laughs> uh, play quite a bit. And uh, you see females with all these superpowers fighting against males. You know, the characters they put on there on the screen are females. Why should we limit that to video games only, where the female uh, has all these superpowers and throws, you know, this energy or whatever nonsense they've got in those video games? Well, why limit it to, <laughs> to the video game? Why not have it in real life? Why don't we go out there? and uh, fight in real life, you know, male against women, uh, male against female. Any problem with that? I mean, is there something wrong with that? A lot of females might say, well, that's unfair. Well, what's unfair about it? I mean, there are females out there within a given weight category that are more skilled than a male and will beat them. And so you'll have this ranking and maybe the first 10 will be males and maybe the 11th will be a female. And then over time, you know, you'll have maybe the fifth one will be a female and maybe the Further on, maybe the second one will be a female. I mean, can, can that happen? Okay, that's the question. And if, if that can happen, why not have unisex sports? Why limit it to everything else? And yeah, I mean, uh, we don't have equality, certainly uh, in birthing. I mean, we don't do that. Uh, they do that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we don't have perfect equality, but again, it's just a question of uh, people who want to become um, uh, professionals and want to make a career out of it. Maybe they should just run against male, uh, swim against them, uh, fight against them, the whole works, all sports. Okay, teams, male teams against female teams, why? Why not just make it intersex? You know, completely mixed, mixed against mixed. We do it in softball, don't we? I mean, I've seen, I played softball and we played it with mixed teams. Uh, we did also, I played with, uh, you know, not professionally, obviously, volleyball, you know, mixed teams. What's different uh, about a woman in that sense? I mean, she can hit the ball just as much as a, any male, right? Okay, and some are even more skilled than a lot of males, so yeah. Okay, um, so this comes down really to, to this uh, issue about chromosomes and DNA and our genetic code. And one of the issues there is that uh, this article that I saw uh, in, um, I think it was Berkeley, and it says, as an endangered species dwindles, it loses genetic variation, okay? But it says, as a species dwindles, okay? Now keep that in mind. And even if the species rebounds, okay? Like you see there, the blue line going back up, population increases, okay? It says its level of genetic variation will not, okay? So even if the population rebounds, okay? 
doesn't mean they're going to recover uh, genetic variation. They're still going to have very low genetic variation. Why? Because genetic variation will only slowly be restored through the accumulation of mutations over many generations. For this reason, an endangered species with low genetic variation may risk extinction long after its population size has recovered. Okay, so yeah, I think um, you have this situation where, for example, humans, we've lost quite a bit of genetic diversity over the centuries. We have very, a relatively low genetic diversity, considering that we're 8 billion people on the planet, and the geneticists don't really know what's happening. But here you have a clue. These people are saying, you know, you can lose genetic variation over time, but usually when the population dwindles. In the case of man, you know, we have lots of population, but very little genetic diversity. You know, uh, some monkeys out there, some chimps in Africa, as I showed uh, previous uh, lectures, have more genetic diversity, you know, maybe 50, 100 chimps, than all of the human race. How can that possibly be? Here you have a small group, and they have more genetic diversity than all of the human race. And again, I'm saying that we lost genetic diversity over time. And what's the problem that I see with this? Well, it's not focused properly. Because what they, when they talk about extinction in this context, they go completely off on left field. You know, uh, they, they go on a tangent. And what's the tangent? Here it is. Here's the comment that follows this. And it goes something like this. says, the risk of extinction or population decline because of low genetic variation is predicted by evolutionary theory. Okay, great. Epidemics could sweep through a species with low genetic variation, increasing their chances of extinction. In other words, what are these geneticists talking about? What they're saying is that a species that has very low genetic diversity uh, is, um, uh, is, is in danger of becoming extinct only because uh, they could get a disease that, for which they have no uh, defenses. That's the argument. Okay? And I'm saying that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Okay? Uh, this is where they make their um, error. Uh, no species ever died because of disease. Disease doesn't kill species, okay? And so when these people talk about, oh, you know, uh, they have very low genetic diversity if a disease comes over, kills them all, or kills m many of them, that's not the issue. The issue is that when you have low genetic diversity, you are inbreeding, you're going to produce garbage as children. You're going to produce uh, what we see today among humans. You know, we're not producing good stock now. And uh, there are many parameters, uh, among them, you know, low sperm counts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are many um, clues that we're not producing good children today. So the children that we're producing today are not of the quality that we had 200, 300 years ago. They're not of the same quality because we've been inbreeding. It's like, you know, the, um, uh, the kings of uh, Russia, you know, the, uh, the uh, Tsars, and they had hemophilia because they inbred. Uh, I showed also that the uh, Charles II of Spain, he was uh, from the Habsburg family, and they all intermarried, and eventually you know, came down to Charles II, several generations after, you know, the founders, and he, he was born, you know, uh, they, he, they called him a bewitched because he had mental problems, and he was born like that. And so, you know, a lot of these um, uh, inter inbreeding is, is what really is the problem. And you can't have a species live on forever inbreeding and expect not to have at some point some genetic problems. And I'm saying all these genetic problems that we have today are related to the fact that we've been inbreeding. That's where the danger is, not in the fact that we're um, uh, susceptible to diseases. That's, that's the least of our problems. The problem is that we're, we're all marrying each other, and whoever you marry today is either your brother or your sister from a genetic point of view. When you do that, it's the same thing that happened to the SARS and so on, the Habsburgs. What you're doing is you're having two people who have the same genetic code and they have children. Nothing good is going to come out of there. And you see that also with the Amish. Amish are also having problems, genetic problems. Why? Because they've been inbreeding for, what, 300 years now? That's the issue. So it's not an issue of that you are now more susceptible to catch a disease for which you have no defenses. It's, it's the other one. It's the fact that you're going to produce children with genetic problems. That's my argument. Okay, okay uh, here's uh, another file. It says, Estrogen, estrogenization of the environment is bound to change human sexual identity and behavior. So there we have the Sandman. He's pouring all this estrogen in the environment. Okay, Well, you know, there are studies, but... Those studies are based on lab experiments, and those are very controlled experiments where they, you know, pollute the environment. But to think that estrogen is floating around, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, a far cry. I think, uh, you know, uh, 
you can't extract, you can't generalize from what you see in an experiment. Okay. So yeah, you know, you have these uh, environmental problems and I put little weight on environmental problems. I say that more, most of our problems have to do with inbreeding, with the fact that uh, we've lost genetic diversity and we keep inbreeding, you know, just marrying our own type. And eventually, you know, uh, that's got to produce some problems. And I think that's what we're seeing out there today. Okay. I think a lot of these problems are genetic or, uh, from a genetic point of view, and we're not going to overcome them. I think it can only get worse. There's no way you can undo what we're doing now. Okay. okay uh, another fellow says the word sustainability is code word for the globalist, like the handshake for the Mason. Uh, when one combine this, when one combines this information with a revolutionary counter revolutionary new constitution, which acknowledges climate change, same sex marriage, presumption of innocence and God forbid, private property, there's only one conclusion, we are entering the age of great convergence, Cuba will become more and more like the US and the US will become more like Cuba, the end is near as you foretold. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, one, one of the things that you see in the world, and I think it, it does uh, reflect uh, quite a bit on um, extinction, the fact that all countries are becoming more uniform in the type of governments they have. It's a mixture. It's not communism and it's not capitalism, not any longer. Now it's all mixed systems. Some parts of the economy are handled in a socialistic manner, uh, perhaps health, like here in Germany, um, for sure, education, more or less everywhere. Um, uh, 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 what is it? Disability, unemployment, retirement, all those things are handled in a socialistic fashion. On the other hand, you have also capitalism. Communism, uh, uh, China is not a communist country under no circumstances. All it has uh, about communism is it's its name. Other than that, you know, China is just the same as the United States. It has, you know, one party. In the United States, there's only one party with two names. In China, it's, it has only one name. That's the only difference. But other than that, it's the same thing. You have a ruling group and those people live well, and then you have the people at the bottom, majority of them, right? Um, way at the bottom, they're, they're poor. In the middle, you got the middle class. That, that's the same almost in every country. It's just that different countries have different levels of in income, and so that pyramid doesn't always look have the same shape in all countries. In some countries, the middle class is a little bigger or quite a bit bigger than in other countries. That's the only difference. Other than that, they all have this pyramid structure. So, uh, you know, uh, there is no communism and capitalism in that sense. And in, if you go to Cuba, in many ways, you'll find it that it's like the United States. And you say, is, is that so? Yeah, I'm telling you, I've been there several times and uh, there's a black market out on the streets. Rugged capitalism right on the streets and people trade and uh, they do their thing. And nobody can control so, so many uh, transactions going on on the streets. The only problem with Cuba, they've got nothing to trade in general, you know. Uh, other than that, you know, people are the same everywhere. Uh, people like to trade and they like to have things and they want to have things, you know, and so uh, whether it's communist or capitalism, it doesn't matter. People trade and, and, they want, and, and they get things that they want. So there is not that much difference between countries. Okay? They all have a, you call it capitalist slash communist uh, economy, society. Uh, you want to call it socialism. You want to call it um, center left. Whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. They all have more or less the same system. Very little difference. And dictatorships are a question of um, how much you really know. I mean, you know, you, you go to North Korea and say, well, that's a dictatorship. Well, what is a dictatorship? That they control the armed forces and they control the news that reaches you and the resources? Well, what's different with other countries? <laughs> Poor people in every country have the same problem. You know, they're not the ones who rule. They don't have the power and they have to live with what's essentially given to them, whatever's available to them according to their income. And in that sense, they are slaves you know, the people at the, way at the bottom. So, so there's very little difference, really. Uh, the only difference is some countries are richer than others. And so they can afford to give their populations something more than other countries. So if you take a country in Africa, almost any of them, compare them against Germany here, yeah, the, the level of income here is much higher, okay? And so people are not in, in as bad a shape as in other countries. Other than that, there's a pyramid here and there's a pyramid over there. The pyramid over there is just a little lower. That's all it is, quite a bit lower in some cases. But other than that, there's always a pyramid. People at the top and powerful people who control the money, the resources, the law, the news, and those at the bottom that are on the receiving end. That's about it. <laughs>